seventh grade math students. We're going to be looking today at the rest of Lesson 7.1. Okay, so please copy this in your notes. Your heading for today is Solving Proportions, Lesson 7.1, Part 2. And of course, the day is whatever the date is today. So be sure and put all of this in your notes. Okay, now remember, students, I will go pretty fast. Okay, and that's good because those that take notes quickly can get done with their notes quickly. Those that need a little more time can pause the video and write things down. Okay, so don't hesitate to pause the video and write things down. Okay, all right, guys, here we go. Let's jump into this. Now, remember, um, we looked at the other day that when you're given um, two ratios like this that are set equal, Portion, okay, and I showed you how to test to see if this is a true proportion, and I showed you how to do that by remember how to test and see if this is a true proportion. Remember, we multiply our extremes, and we would get 490. Then we multiply our means, and we would also get 490. Okay, now notice these two. Oh, this is a true proportion. Now, students, let's stop and let's use some common sense, okay? Pretend I took this number away, okay? And I replaced it with a question mark. And I said, students, what is that missing number right there, okay? Well, it's I think it's pretty much common sense how we're do this, I mean, we know that 10 times 49 is 490, right? So, we know if I take 7 times my missing number, whatever that missing number is, I should also get what? 490, right? So, I'm missing a number right there. Got it? Should make sense, okay? So, let's say I use the variable here, like, um, Let's make this a dot. Now watch this carefully, students. And you take notes on this however you want to, okay? But pretend I made this question mark at x, okay? Then I can really say 7 times x is the same thing as 7x, right? And what is 7x as to f to equal 490, right? So I multiply these two here. That gave me and then I knew that 7 times x or 7 times question mark would have to equal 490. Okay, that should make sense. And then, of course, you guys know how to solve this. Let's find both sides by 7, and you would get 70, which is, of course, the missing number. Okay, so with that in mind, let's practice this on quite a few. Problems. Okay, so please copy this first problem here in your notes, and let's solve this together. Okay, here we go. So first of all, um, we're missing a number here. Okay, so let's multiply our extremes, and 2 times n, of course, would just be 2n. Okay, now, I know that this has to equal this right here. So 8 times 5 is 40. Got it? And of course I put an equal sign right here. So let's review. I multiply these together. That gives me 2n. I multiplied these here together and it gave me 40. And now you should know what to do. Divide both sides by 2. Your 2's cancel leaving you with n. And of course, 40 divided by 2 is 20. So there you go. You found the missing number here to be 20. Pretty simple. Okay, let's try another one. Now, if you want to pause the video and work ahead, that's up to you. Or you can stay here and do it with me. It's totally up to you. Okay, so first of all, let's multiply our extremes. And when you do that, you're going to get 100. 
Now, up next, let's multiply our means. 5 times w, and that's going to give you 5 w. Now remember, guys, this here has to equal this here. So let's put an equal sign in between them. Okay? And now you should know what to do. Let's divide both sides by 5. Okay? To get rid of our 5 here. When you do that, students, your 5 will cancel, leaving you with w. And over here on the left side, 120 divided by 5 is 24. Okay? So you found this missing number right here to be 24. Okay? Not too bad. Now, let's try one more. And on this one here, why don't you pause the video, do this entire thing. Actually, I think we're going to do two more. I'm not sure it's one more or two more. Let me glance ahead and see here. Yeah, I, I think this is the last one here before we go on to something else. But anyways, um, why don't you pause the video, try this one on your own, and then when you're finished, um, start the video and see if you got it right. Now, I do want to give you a warning. Your answer will be a fraction, okay? And I would like you to write your answer as a mixed number. So... Let's pretend you get something out like 20 over 3. I would want you to write that as 6 and 2 thirds. Okay? So pause the video. Try this one on your own when you're done. Restart the video and see how you did. Okay, students, let's see how you did. Okay, here we go. So first of all, let's multiply our extremes. 3 times x is 3x. Then let's multiply our means. 11 times 11 is 121. And then, of course, put an equal sign right here. Now, I hope you got that much right. If not, please erase your, uh, your notes and fix your notes so that they are correct. Okay, now divide both sides by 3. Your 3's cancel there, leaving you with x. And of course, your answer is 121 over 3. Now, guys, listen, uh, I don't know you that well. Um, I don't know if you struggle with mixed numbers or not. So if any of you do not know how to take this fraction here and write it as a mixed number, let me help you with that, okay? You take the top part of the fraction and you put it inside the division box. We call that the dividend, okay? The 3, the bottom of the fraction, goes on the outside, and we call that our divisor, okay? So the top is your dividend, the bottom number is your divisor, so it would look like this, okay? Now, 3 goes 12, obviously 4 times, 4 times 3 is 12, subtract, and you're going to get 0. 0, bring down your 1, and of course 3 cannot go into 1, so 1 is your remainder, okay? So, what do you do with your remainder? You put it in the top of the fraction, and your divisor becomes the bottom of your fraction always, okay? Your remainder always goes up to up, and your divisor always goes in the bottom as your and so your answer would be 4 and 1 third. Okay? Now, hopefully you're getting that. Now let's apply this to some more problems. Okay? So here we go. Now, you do not have to copy this problem in your notes. That would take you way too long to do. Okay? So I've chosen problems that are in your book. All you have to write down in your notes is this right here. Just put in your notes, page 200 example 3, and then you'll know where this problem came from, okay? Guys, please take really good notes. We're going to do, I think, three of these, I think. So please listen carefully and let me help you. Okay, here we go. The, dire the directions on a back of concrete mix call for three quarts of water for every 40 pounds of mix, okay? So, how much water should be added if you have 
30 pounds of mix. Okay, so please take notes and listen. First of all, this is the ratio you want to use. Okay, so my ratio is 3 quarts, 4 or 2, 40 pounds of mix. So, oh, there you go. So, in your, in your notes, go ahead and write your ratio. There it is, okay? 3 over 40. Now, if you're wondering, is it important that you, is it important that you label these? Yes, it is. Very important. I'll explain why in a second, okay? Now, moving on, here's your next ratio. Oh, how much water? That's your question mark. Should be added if you have 30 pounds of mix. So you have a question mark. That's your, that's your unknown. That's your variable. That's what you're looking at. So how much water should be added if you only if you only need 30 pounds of mix? Okay. So here's your ratio right here. Question. Over 30. Okay? Of course, instead of a question mark, I'm going to go ahead and use X. Okay? Now, look at this very, very carefully. Notice over here on my left, I have pounds in the bottom in the denominator. Pounds. And notice I have pounds down here in the denominator also. That is mandatory. Okay, that is a must. Your labels must always match up denominator to denominator and numerator to numerator. For example, up here you have three quarts of what? Water. And up here we're looking for X amount of water. Okay, so please notice that your denominators must match the labels, and so must your numerators too. Okay, all right. Now, guys, we just learned how to find a missing number in a proportion, right? I just taught you how to do that. So here's your two ratios. Set them equal, and now let's solve for x. Okay, so let's multiply our extremes right here and we get 90. Let's multiply our means 40 times x and we get 40x and then set them equal. Okay? Now you should know what to do. Divide both of them by 40. Okay? And of course your 40 is cancel leaving you with x and over here if you reduce or you get nine fours, okay? Now remember, if you write that as a mixed number, which I want you to do, four goes into nine two times, subtract your remainder is one, so put your remainder over your divisor, and nine fours is the same thing as two and one fourth. Now, we're solving what word problem? So if we're solving word problems, you need to label your answers, okay? So, uh, very, very important. So, this number here stands for what? X. And X is where? X is right here. And X is across from what? Quartz of water. So you would label your answer two and one fourth quarts of water. So oh, on a test or a quiz, if you don't label your answer, would I take points off? Yes, I would. Okay, you need to label your answers. Let's try a couple more of these. Okay, here we go. Now, in your notes, write down page 200. 32 number 12, and here we go. A recipe for 20 rolls calls for 5 tablespoons of butter. 
I'm going to need to do are needed for 30 rolls. Okay, so first of all, students, here's your ratio right here. Do you see it? 20 rolls for 5 tablespoons of butter. Okay, so, um, let's go ahead and write our ratio, students, right here. 20 rolls for 5 five tablespoons. Okay? Now, hopefully you see your next ratio. It's right here. Tablespoons. How many? So there's your question mark. How many tablespoons are needed for 30 rolls? Right? So, write your ratio right here. Question mark. Tablespoons over 30 rolls. Now, everyone listen. If you did this, you're wrong. Because look, what's up top here? Rolls. So what has to be up top over here? Rolls. What's in the bottom down here? Tablespoons. So what has to be down here? Tablespoons. So this ratio here has to be flipped. Guys, always check. You might say, Mr. Earhart, could I flip this ratio instead? Yes. I don't care if you put the 5 up top and the 20 down here and then leave this one the same, that's fine. Or you can flip this one, doesn't matter to me. Either way, you'll get the same answer, okay? So I'm gonna flip this one here, right here, so when I flip it, I get this. Now that's good. Rolls on top with rolls, tablespoons on top with tablespoons, okay? And then of course, put your equal sign. And now guys, we've learned how to find this missing number right here, right? So here we go. Let's multiply our extremes. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and call this x, okay? Now, 20 times x is, 20 times x is 20x, and then multiply your means right here. 5 times 30 is 150, and then put your equal sign, okay? Now, let's divide both sides by 20. Cancel, leaving you with x. And over here, when you reduce this, you will get 15 over 2. But I'd like you to write that as a mixed number, so your answer would be 7 and a half. Now, you need to label your answers, okay? So, 7 and a half stands for what? x. And where's x at? It's right here. Right here. And what is x? It's tablespoons of butter. So your answer should be seven and a half tablespoons of butter. Okay? All right, let's try, I think, one more. This is our last one, okay? So if you want to try this one on your own, feel free to write this in your notes right here. Page 232, number 13. Feel free to write that down and then pause the video and try to work this on your own, or you can do it with me. It's totally up to you, okay? So here we go. All right, so first of all, students, here's my ratio right here, okay? So let's go ahead and write that ratio right here, 140 miles per five gallons of gas, okay? Now here's my next ratio. I've got a question mark here. How many miles could it go on? Seven gallons. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to write that ratio right here. Question mark, miles, seven gallons. Now, do my labels line up? Yes, miles up top, miles up top, gallons at the bottom, gallons at the bottom, we're good. Okay, now for my question mark right here, I'm going to put an X. Okay, well, I'm going to in a second there. Now, let's go ahead and solve this problem. Let's multiply our extremes. 140 times 7 is 980. And then multiply your means, 5 times x, which is 5x. And then put your equal sign. And then you know what to do, students, from here. Divide both sides by 5. Cross off your 5. And then over here, 908 divided by 5 is 196. Now don't forget, 100. 6 stands for x, and x, of course, is your miles, so we would say I'm going to get 196 miles out of this.
this um, seven gallons of gas. Okay, so five gallons of gas Newtons gives me one hundred and forty miles. Seven gallons of gas would give me one hundred and ninety-six 